I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And we are the Button Mappers. Hey, the Button Mappers. Fantasy football. All right, I'm recording. Two. Alex, your personal recording? Oh, yeah. Hold on. There we go. (laughs) Let me just do a little. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just do a little. There we go. <laughs> and you'll, you're being recorded. All right. Welcome to the Button Mappers podcast. I don't know if we've ever introduced a podcast in such a normal, mundane way, but I didn't know how else to start, and everybody was quiet. So, Welcome to the Button Mappers Podcast, podcasting straight into your ear holes. There you go. Alex. I'm Monday, your host. Monday. <laughs> We're gonna well, be- hey, Button Mappers <laughs> Podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> What's that? It sounds like a guest. Who's the guest? Uh, Daniel Santos. Uh, hello. Woo! Hi, what's up? Thanks for having me back for like the fifth time. <laughs> yes, Daniel's back. We've had him on the Game of the Year podcast. There was a couple of times. A couple of times, right? And yeah. then uh, we had you on uh, Shadow of the Colossus, one of our favorite Shadow episodes. Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, oh, cool. Thank you. That's yeah. a game oh, talk. Right. Game talk, right? You were on a game yeah. podcast? Yeah, he was. I remember I talked about Order of Ecclesia on that one. Yeah. That was there. Yeah, so repeat offender. Daniel Santos. I don't know if offender is the right <laughs> term. <Spencer. laughs> I mean, I try not to be offensive, only sometimes. Um, uh, if you want to listen to more Button Mappers stuff, make sure that you go to our Discord. And then we're also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And uh, we're also on YouTube. You're probably That's probably where you're seeing us slash listening to us now. So go to that uh, that you're already there at. Yeah. Leave, a, leave a comment. Go to the thing you're already on. Yeah. <laughs> leave a comment <laughs> about your favorite Final Fantasy one moment. Um, it's the boss that Alex couldn't beat that you need Bane I, for. I didn't and finish. Then, then, I didn't finish the game. Terry, I want everybody to know this ter- off the bat. I didn't finish. <laughs> Terry, I want you to have your way with him in the comments, please. I, he's all, he's all okay. yours, Terry. And if don't you want to see Terry, the rat if you want to see Terry. Terry have his way with me, make sure you subscribe to our <laughs> Pornhub channel. Yes, the Butt Mappers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new venture we're trying. Okay, uh, that's that's wrong, not a okay. Don't worry. That's that's not a button I want to push. <laughs> <laughs> push it. Uh, Open your map, and then suddenly the Pornhub Central <laughs> Mapper station. It's like you find. The, oh, I'm going to skip over that. <laughs> Don't worry, because Discord's right over here, and you can talk to us about it. Daniel, uh, do you? I know you have a couple channels, but I've I'm noticing that they're not updated a lot. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Um, I have my main channel, which is uh, Daniel Santos. That's where I upload my video essays, and I do have some stuff that I'm gonna upload. It's just you know, real life has gotten into the way i also went to vegas recently Ooh. so there's you know pretty pretty cool what pretty was cool. in vegas a lot of lights oh come Did on you gamble? <laughs> I, i'm not i'm not a gambler uh but i i met, i went mostly for a music festival i got to see system of a down which was hey. whoa dude. that's like one of my all-time favorite bands I'm, hell yeah i'm I, jealous i was obsessed with them when i was in high school like i Damn. would listen to them like nearly every single day and i actually almost had the chance to see them back in like 2005 but and i was like ah eh, whatever I'll, I'll i'll have another chance to see him and then they broke up <laughs> so, <laughs> so well, i didn't get a chance to see him until a couple of days ago where i had to fucking fly to vegas just to see them but i finally made that like 17 year old dream finally <laughs> happened almost two decades so well the half-life <laughs> oh yeah, it was yeah. Pretty that's sick. fantastic um, what the hell of a scolding spencer you haven't updated your channel daniel well I, you didn't finish you didn't finish final fantasy hey, yo. you know, i'm in a channel. i'm in a scolding mood after <laughs> alex uh hey i mean it's it, 
it, for me, writing a video essay, it just creating one, it takes some time, right? I mean, yeah. I have to really, because for me, they're they're deeply personal. Yeah. So, and that's not something I can just, oh, just start typing away. Like it's 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 difficult for me to like really put into words like the way I feel about something and wanting to like tackle a specific subject and not even just tackle the subject, but like really get to the heart and the core of what it is I want to discuss. It's, it's, it, it takes a lot of mental, um, like, uh, it, I, I guess not stress, but like it, 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 it meant it's mentally taxing for me because of, you know, how to how personal it can get. Can we get, so, a, can we get a sneak preview of what, what might be in the pipeline? Sure. A so, button mapper exclusive. You, you button mapper exclusive. Oh, boy. So, uh, w- one of the videos that I have in the pipeline, uh, actually, just need to record some footage and then cut it up. Is talking about the Devil May Cry reboot, and it's Ooh. specifically not. It's not going to be a review. It's not going to be like me dogging on the game. It's more specifically trying to get across the mindset of like, because I'm a hardcore Devil May Cry fan. I love the series and uh, the reboot had like a huge backlash and I don't want to say I necessarily participated in the backlash, but I was not a fan of the game. So I wanted to, I wanted the video to kind of really get to the heart and explain like the mindset of a lot of people, not justify it because there was a lot of people that were acting really poorly, you know, sending death threats to the, to Ninja Theory and stuff, which is not cool. But I did want to, at the very least, explain my perspective and try to like explain somewhat the mindset of a lot of the people that were upset by the reboot and also kind of cap it off with, Hey, we have Devil May Cry 5 now. It's easier to go back to the reboot now and, in, and appreciate it for what it did. And it's also a bit of a, a call to art, not call to arms, but like it is a bit of like a, like a, Hey, to people that are still upset, let it go. It's not worth it anymore. Uh, to to still be mad at this game, like at, at most you can be upset that it delayed Don't May Cry Five for as long as it did. But is that really worth being upset about anymore? I don't think so. So that's what that video is going to be about, and kind of go into detail. And another video I wanted to do is not nearly as like deep as that. Is just talking about a character from Fallout New Vegas called Benny. I don't know if you guys have played Fallout New Vegas. Long time ago. Never played it. I got mad at Fallout because they changed the direction of it, and I was angry. Yeah, Spencer was like, e, Fallout! She threw his, well, I mean, threw you his know, copy you, out the window. Yeah. I mean, Fallout New Vegas is made by the same team that made Fallout 1 and 2. I know, but I I, I, I have no r- real good reason. <laughs> it's just when, I, when it first came out, the, the Fallout 3, I was mad, and I pretty much ejected myself from gaming anyway, so... Okay. I was like, why? I mean, I thanks, thanks for making Fallout a first-person shooter. And I know it's a little more than that, but at the time, it's like, <laughs> I hear, I hear you. I hear you. But um, there's a character in the game called Benny, and I think he's a great character, but um, I feel like he's kind of like wasted potential because he he only really exists for like the first like third or half of the game or so, um, and he kind of just like exits the narrative. No matter what decision you make, he just basically exits the narrative. And the video is just ma- basically me just kind of like spitballing, brainstorming, going like, hey, you know, obviously this game is rushed. They didn't do everything they wanted to do with the game. Um, so here's me just like kind of brainstorming, like if they had the time to, you know, and the the, the, the development uh, resources necessary to have made Benny um, as great as he could have been. Here's some scenarios I came up with that they could have like taken the character had they had the time to finish the game. That's basically more of like a, a fun like thought experiment. Oh, well, theory crafting. Kinda, yeah. Ninja theory crafting. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, what? And th- another video I really want to do. This one's still in. The other scripts are done, and I just need to get footage and cut them up. This one's still in like the uh, the, the writing phase, but I want to do a video on an anime called Bachi the Rock, um, specifically because that anime uh, is is about like social anxiety, and I thought that was something that really resonated with me, and it was something that I wanted to 
kind of explore like how the show does it handles the subject really well and kind of like just explore um the idea how it relates to me and how uh, i related to the show and that's that's basically where i got in the pipeline sweet the the button mappers exclusive yes guys put in the comments uh cheer him on get him to release it I, i can't wait to see it dude yeah, the the uh, the Devil May Cry one's probably going to be first. So. Okay, Devil May Cry. Nice. Yeah. I'll be highlight the uh, Fox News boss because that's a fair part of the game. What's I'll, that? I'll make sh- yeah, I'll make sure to leave there's, it in the footage. There, there's a Fox News boss in the Devil May Cry reboot. <laughs> yeah, he's like a Bill O'Reilly satire. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like you're literally like hopping across like like the news. Like the uh, I don't know if you would call it like the, the framing, logo, like the, yeah, the logos and stuff. Or like you know, like like when you're watching the news, like 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 the thing, like like the headlines run across and stuff, and like you're fighting like a big AI face looking thing. Yeah, and... the the I will say like the level design and like the aesthetics of the levels are pretty cool in the reboot, and that's like one of the most standout areas where it's like, whoa, this looks really really sick. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sick, remember Final Fantasy? Oh, jeez, it's one of the grandfathers. There's like mm-hmm. fathers. There's there's brothers of RPGs, and there's fathers, and then there's grandfathers. <laughs> yeah, there's brothers. There's sisters. Yeah. There's Atelier Riza, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, whatever the <laughs> fuck that is. I, that's that's the perverted cousin you don't talk to. <laughs> This is this is what Final Fantasy's doing. Yeah. <laughs> you can trace it all back here. You're not wrong. <laughs> do, do you know how many degenerates Final Fantasy VII created specifically? Oh, <laughs> Just think about it. Or don't. Maybe don't think about it. Well, it's like it got so mainstream you get all the the rabble that joins in with it. So it makes sense. The filth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bar- Barrett is pretty hot, so I get it. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's a, a hunk of man meat right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're doing a map out today of Final Fantasy, the first one, um, in in celebration of the Pixel Remaster, and also because it's RPG Month, and it seemed like the only game that was logical to play. Yeah, and and because 16 is coming out soon, and because of 16, lots of. Wow, you guys are, are really bringing in like the the synergy here. We're very inspired. <laughs> <laughs> inspired by what? By everything. Just in, by literally just inspired by in general. <laughs> the world turns, and we're we're excited about it. So we're playing Final Fantasy One. Cool beans. Um, Teddy, what's your experience with Final Fantasy? Well, for RPG month, I am representing as Dragon Quest Papo. Or oh, Pop, yeah. Pop, what is it, Papo? Right. <laughs> it's me today. Papo, not Poppy. Papo. No, oh, Poppy's already there, a thing. There already is a Dragon Quest Poppy who maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> so friend Dragon of the Quest show. Papo. Yeah. And, yes. What What about Capo? Like a, a mob boss or something? Capo is synonymous with a police officer in Nazi Germany, so I don't want to be a Capo. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. I didn't know that. <laughs> you can strike that from the record. We'll edit it in post. <laughs> Final Fantasy. Uh, okay, actually, one of my first video gaming memories was at a football uh, Super Bowl game with my parents. Uh, or We were at their friend's, family friend's house watching the Super Bowl. And I went upstairs with the other kids And I didn't know any of the kids, but they were playing games. It was one of my first interactions with games. And they were playing a Final Fantasy. I can't tell you which one it is. But that's my reason for being here today, talking about Final Fantasy, is to figure out which Final Fantasy game did I see at the Super Bowl party. (laughs) (laughs) It's not this one. Interesting. (laughs) And so (laughs) that's pretty much where it ends. (laughs) Sandy's on the quest. Um, You going to ask Daniel? No, I just said cool. Okay. <laughs> Alex, what's yours? Hi, I'm Alex, and I like video games. When I, when I was a kid, oh. I went to a Super Bowl party. I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that um, is so offended. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible no, impression. <laughs> I, uh, I was never into RPGs as a kid, really, until maybe like 
my teenage years I get interested. And I remember Final Fantasy being like such a daunting one to get into because like fucking Christ, by that point, like I was like twelve, thirteen. It was like the you know, those are the newest ones that were happening. I think I, I think thirteen was happening and twelve was newish. Um and I remember being so like I don't know, kind of like, what, like, how do I start? Like, should I play the first one? Should I, like, jump around? I didn't know anything about Final Fantasy, really. Um, it wasn't until I got a PSP that I really went back and played the first few games on PSP, because they had, like, the PSP versions. And I did play through this game on the PSP uh, by legal means. I had it and on my PSP. Not, not sure and, why you uh, felt the need to uh, clarify <laughs> that, but okay. I just want to make sure everybody knows it was by legal means. <laughs> I didn't mod it. <laughs> it was mod it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had a really, I had a newfound appreciation for the game, and I'm happy to talk about it today. Daniel, I feel like this is going to be interesting. What is your connection to Final Fantasy? Uh, in, just in general? Um so my first exposure to Final Fantasy was Mystic Quest. Oh, oh no. shit. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I was like three years old at the time. Right, so right. like, I mean, people say like, oh, I'm so sorry. But it's like, I was three. What the fuck did I know? <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, I, I liked it a lot at the time. Um, and it wasn't like until years later where people dunked on it all the time when I realized, oh, this is a game that people don't like okay whatever but i i would say like i didn't really fully get into final fantasy uh until final fantasy 9 um i remember getting it as like i think it was like a christmas present or a birthday present i'm pretty sure it was a birthday present i'm pretty sure and i fell in love with it just thought that that it was like the one of the best games ever at the time and it still holds up i think 9 is still like one of the best but uh, I remember I had a demo disc for FF7, and I played that to death until I finally got a copy. Um, and I just kind of escalated from there. I kept, I, I played and I've beaten like more than half of the series. I've at least played every single entry except for 11 because that that's one of the MMOs. And that's like the old janky MMO, and I'm like, I... I Nah, no thanks. <laughs> Not getting into that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I played FF1, I played the GBA version. And that game uh, got me through high school. So I really, uh, really appreciate that. Take bringing my Game Boy into class um, and just like hiding it in my book bag and playing <laughs> it with the with the with the sound off. So nobody would uh, suspect anything. They definitely suspected, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, and I'm still a fan today. I still love Final Fantasy and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm hyped for 16. I think 16 gonna, gonna kick some booty. Mm. Yeah. Spencer. Oh, what, what's up? What's your history with Final Fantasy? Oh, okay. Um, when I was like kid we rented final fantasy 2 which i'm in america so that's four and uh, i was very confused and so we returned it and why why were you confused uh, i mean we were we weren't like a there's a long backstory but we weren't a very gaming enthusiast um family (laughs) Um, but there's that's the short story of that but um, we were raised on like Mario and Donkey Kong, so okay, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, we were like, we're like, why are there all these like menus and like clicking? And I think I, I, if my memory serves, I did eventually figure it out because it was like a three day rental, and I remember making some progress on it, and I can even pinpoint one of the places I had to stop, but I don't know, it just it was we were we were kind of lost when we got it. Um, and also, so I'm a twin, so the games we were supposed to get were games where we could like pass the controller back and forth, like like you die, you miss a jump, and then you pass the controller to your friend. Um, but obviously, Final Fantasy there was just long stretches of talking and not doing that, so it was, it was right, right. It was weird for us. Um, 
And then I saw my, and then the PS1 came out and uh, I saw people playing Final Fantasy 7, was very confused by that. And then Final Fantasy 9, by then Pokemon had come out. So I was sort of familiar with turn-based combat now. And the, I was just like, not about it. I, I just said like, why, why wouldn't you just play like an action game? And then I played Chrono Trigger and everything flipped over for me. And then uh, uh, Chrono Trigger is classic. So, yeah, if it was going to be any game, it would be that one. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I get it. And then and then I was like, OK, let's go play them all. And the Final Fantasy nine is definitely my favorite. I can pretty definitively say I'm excited for 16. But obviously, that's a huge departure from, from everything else. So, I mean, I'm interested. As a- <laughs> I mean, I already explained I'm a Devil May Cry fan, so combining Devil May Cry with Final Fantasy to me is like peanut butter and jelly. So just just inject it in my veins. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. That's where it all began. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where it all began for Final Fantasy. It was originally released... And on December 18th, 1987. And it wasn't so final. <laughs> it was the first of many. <laughs> you know who the developers are? Oh, never mind. I think that's a, another thing. Anyway, so... What? <laughs> I'm looking at the wiki here, and it says one of the developers is Bandai Namco. But I think that might be because it's like talking about all the releases. Like all the, like, the uh... additional stuff. Yeah, I was going to say it's made by Square. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I thought I saw Pac-Man in there, but I wasn't sure. Uh, so I'll read, the, I'll read the synopsis, the story. This is uh, at the beginning in the opening scene. And so their journey began. The four warriors of light felt overwhelmed by the great task destiny had placed upon them. They did not know the true significance of the four crystals they held in their hands. The crystal that Ooh. once... Long ago, shone with a light so brilliant. That's Final Fantasy, right? Yeah. The the time for their journey had come. The time to cast off the veil of darkness and bring the world once more into the light. And that is our opening scene for Final Fantasy. Pretty pretty light on story, this one. Kind of like Dragon Quest 1. Yeah, I mean, basically, you're just a uh, you're just a drug addict in the streets trying to get that crystal. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I was wondering where you were going with that. I was like, I was like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> get that crystal, baby. So I remember starting off in the throne room and talking to the king, and then uh, he just gives you three chests, and then there's a gold in one of them, torch, and a magic key. Um, and then you just go and then there's just like an open world and there's a whole overture and everything. It's really impressive. Yeah. That's basically how it goes. And then the slimes. Yeah. I think you're thinking of the wrong game. <laughs> so, uh, this game's more different, Teddy. This game's got a party. All right. So, uh, what? <laughs> so, party? <laughs> and you're invited. <laughs> So we're we're, no we're breaking this game up into fourths. Uh, we're gonna start with Cornelia, and then go Star Fox. St- absolutely, Star Fox yeah. reference. I think they were referencing Star Fox when they made this game. That's Cornaria. We're then, we're a quick Eddie. Uh, this is totally off topic, but since you brought up Star Fox, have you seen a fox in space? Yes, I have. Animated series. What's that? That's all I need. That's all I need to know. Yeah. I also <laughs> that's <laughs> for those that don't know a fox in space check it out real good stuff even if you don't care about Star Fox it's cool <laughs> like the animated Kerbo uh, okay so our, when, when we first jump in it's Cornelia and then the Temple of Chaos so you're trying to rescue the king's daughter the princess Sarah yeah. oh, right, Sarah and uh, one could think that that was the entire game, especially considering how old this game is. Wait, that wasn't the entire game? 10 minutes or less. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was a speedrunner. <laughs> uh, I guess while we do this, what was your party of choice? Mm. Ooh, or I, I guess Daniel. 
Okay, Dan, uh, go first. So when I first played it on the GBA, I had uh, a fighter, I had a monk, a black mage, and a white mage. When I was replaying it for this, uh, same setup, except instead of a white mage, I replaced them with a red mage. Mm, so it was fighter, monk, red mage, and what? Uh, and black mage. Black mage, gotcha. What were their names? Uh, the fighter was Shin. Um, the red mage was Rojo, which is Spanish for red. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I forget, I forget the, oh, I, I called the monk Bruce, like Bruce Lee. Mm. And, oh, what did I call the, the black mage? I think I forgot. Ink. Huh? Ink. Ink. No, no. Oh. Not ink. Guest. No, I, I forget the black mage, but yeah. Harold. Harold and Kumar. Go to White Castle. Harold? Yeah. Kumar. That's a good black mage name. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Yeah. I still go Hank. Teddy. My what? party. Yeah. Oh yeah, Alex wanted to go next. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll Teddy, you can go next. Okay. So I had since this is my first Final Fantasy. Um it's actually my second. I wanted a pretty standard party, so I went warrior. We are the warriors. I'm out to play. <laughs> I was going Warriors of the World, but uh, it works too. I was, I was thinking the Warriors movie. You know Warriors of the World, Daniel? No. There's everywhere. Raise your hands into the air. We're warriors. Warriors of the world. <laughs> Never heard of it. Is I'll it? have to look it up later. It's Man of War. Anyways. Oh, okay. So I had a warrior, which was me, So, and I did my alter ego as Uncle Ted. Uh, had a fighter, not knowing any better that the party would suck, and the only fighter I know is uh, Alex's alter ego, Colby Jack. Oh, hell yeah, dude. She's Colby guns. Jack. <laughs> Jack. Uh, I went Red Mage because they seem the best of both worlds. And I know another person who knows the translation for Rojo is Spencer. So I named it after Spencer's alter ego, uh, Tex Anderson. Tex Anderson, okay. Texas Anderson, thank you. I couldn't fit Full Texas, English. so it's just Tex. <laughs> Then I, of course, got to do a black mage, and the darkest alter ego I know is Bill. So I went Bill. Hell okay. Yeah, uh, I, okay, I just look it up. I, I called my black mage Bam. Bam. Mar Margera? B-A-M. -B bam Bam. Viva La Bam? The Flintstones. I, I, I think my, my, like, my, my reasoning was like, you know, when you blow stuff up, boom, bam, bop. Uh, it's an onomatopoeia. Hey, whip, bap. <laughs> whip bap. Excellent. Alex? I had a warrior, and he was named Turbo. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's <Of course>. me. <laughs> and then I had a monk, and he was named Archive, and for Spencer's channel, RPG Archive. Oh. And he was my punching bag. Sorry, Spencer. And then I had a black mage, and he was named Majora, or Major, I think, maybe, because I, I don't think I could fit Majora all the way. I don't, I don't remember. But that was Teddy. And then I had a white mage, and he was named Eminem. Why would he be named Eminem? <laughs> Any guesses? White. No, I have no idea. <laughs> Eminem. Not, not Eminem, like, spelled out like the rapper. M and M stands for Maps and Mittens, because the Maps and Mittens are always there to heal us. They were our healers. They're white. Yeah. <laughs> white. The majority of them are white too. So <laughs> our almost exclusively white audience. <laughs> cool. Well, Spencer, who was invited to your Okay, well, party? so moving on to Courtney. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean we all kind of had the same parties, I guess, but I don't remember the names either, so I don't even bother. But it was a uh, come up, come on. Just well, the warrior, right now, then. warrior's name would have been Pico because I always name my my guys Pico. 
And then uh, Pico, you're a big fan of uh, Pico de Gallo. Of this, oh, oh, I thought you were a big fan of the Sega oh. Pico learning system. Yeah, that was the it was the one you just said, Alex. It's definitely that. <laughs> and then, oh, the I I had a monk, and his name I think was Chunga. I don't know. I just laughed when I <laughs> said it. When I said like your name would be Chunga. <laughs> Manchanga. I had a white mage. I don't remember the name. Lucy. Short. Dave. Dave. Lucy. Oh. <laughs> and then I had a black mage that I named Vivi after the of Final course. Fantasy Nine. Yeah. Of course. Pretty yeah. basic. Pretty basic bitch over here. I apologize. I mean, I feel like that's basic most people's bitch. like party when they start the game because they think like it's a classic. You mm-hmm. know, gotta gotta have the classic party. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you rescue the princess from the Temple of Chaos. Do a little grinding. Uh, fight Garland. Garlic. Fight, fight Garlic, the, the imposing enemy. You got, got to try not to make sure he uh, doesn't knock you all down. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the Game Boy Advance version, is this a hard fight? No. Okay. It wasn't a hard fight in the Pixel Remaster either. Yeah. There were not any hard fights in the Pixel Remaster <laughs> except for the last boss. Oh, they were all so easy. But so what? one thing I will say, uh, comparing the Pixel Remaster to the GBA version real quick uh, that I thought was interesting. So it looks like the Pixel Remaster has a magic system that's closer to the original. Uh, I believe this specific magic system is called Vancian magic, where you have like the different tiers of of spells. Um, while in the GBA version, they kind of like homogenized it into a more typical magic system. You have your regular magic points, and you just learn. You, you could just learn all the spells in the game. Mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting how in the Pixel Remaster, you had to be more choosy. You had to be like, okay, I have slots, and you can only like fit certain spells in the slots and that was it um do you know where that comes from like i said it's called the uh i think it's a D &D thing it's uh the the vantian magic system correct it's dungeons and dragons they use spells diners and dives oh sorry diners and dives yeah (laughs) see yeah D &D, you have spell (laughs) slots and it, it works slightly different, but I understand why they did it this way. But you can learn you like basically when you when you rest, you learn you can choose to learn spells to take with you on the your quest. But you have to switch them out. Um in this one rest. <laughs> yeah. 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 you do it at the shop. Um, but yeah, in this one, yeah, you buy them at the shop and that's kinda they're kinda set in their place, which is which is cool. I'm but I I like the system actually. I like it a lot. It it, it kind of it, it was a different way to do magic and, and i appreciate it yeah it yeah. threw me off a little bit because i believe the psp version also does the just the standard yeah uh, system so it was like well this is different than what i remember i like yeah. it i like it unique. it works too it's pretty function. it's pretty self-intuitive i guess you know first of like it, it makes you think because you you know in, in the other versions you could just get all the spells and you're just like a powerhouse but in this one it it requires some more strategy and some forward thinking where you're like, okay, well, I can't just get every single elemental spell uh, that I want and just like breeze through stuff. You know, you have to think about like, okay, well, I'm going into the fire cave. It doesn't make sense to bring a fire spell. Then get the ice spell instead. Brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I like the parts wow. that don't make me think. <laughs> so one I like how auto battle saves the last attack or defense or spell that you used. Mm, yeah. And two, I like double speed. It's <laughs> nice. Did not have that in the GBA version. Uh, that is something that the the Pixel Remaster definitely has a leg up on. There's a tip though. If you just drink, uh, if you pound a uh, can of Monster, you can also get double speed in the GBA version. I think that's. Um, Outside of the game, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was in the official Prima strategy guide. <laughs> it said that? I, I don't know if Monster was even a thing at the time. <laughs> Red Bull, then. Red, Red Bull definitely was. <laughs> yeah, Red Bull. <laughs> it gives you wings. 
Uh, so sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> once you do a couple things, you, um, I'm going to name some landmarks. We're going to start on the west side because that's the first. Uh, that is the first. Side. The first crystal you resolve, right, is on the west. From side. the drug addicts. From the drug. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll. There's a couple of landmarks here. There's Provoca, which is a, a town run by pirates. Well, it's, it's oh, overrun. Pirates. Overrun by pirates, I should say. Arbor. Matoya's Cave. There's Elfheim, City of the Elves. Uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hold <You're> on. <laughs> <laughs> Elfheim? The City of Elves? There's oh, Ma- Mount Dwergar. Mount, what? Mount of Dwarves. Mount Durgar. Durgar. So I'll leave it there for now. Um, any memories touring through Elfheim, Mount Durgar, or the Provoca overrun by pirates? I do remember the pirates. The pirates were pretty fun. Like I, I remember like there was like a uh, when you fight them, it's like a whole screen of pirates. And at first you think like, oh man, they're gonna kick my butt. But then they're all like super easy. I think the, I think because they're all drunk or something. So you just like <laughs> kick, you just like beat them all up, and they're like, "Arr, <laughs> you could take my, you could take me ship, but I'm keeping me rum." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this game does throw a lot of enemies at you, which is not consistent throughout the series. They really tone it down later, but this one they'll, they'll, they're not afraid to throw like nine enemies at you. Oh once. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's it. It can be not like overwhelming, but like it can be a little unexpected at times. You're like, all right, I'm gonna open this chest, and it's like nine things pop out. <laughs> <at you. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's in the NES version. The monsters appearing out of chess. I'm pretty yeah, sure. I was watching a Let's Play, and it like wasn't happening to the same extent in Dungeons mm. as it was in this. In this one, it's just like every other chest is a freaking trap. Damn. You get stuff after defeating the monsters, so that's a nice. That's the upside. Yeah. So I you... imagine if 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 I was like, I don't even know. 20 years older than I am, I could be like, it was so cool playing this back on the NES because, like, you could actually see the party attacking the other t- party. And, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I can't say that because I didn't play it. <laughs> but, like, that's what I imagine because, like, they have, like, the little animations where they actually, like, you see them, like, swing their weapons and stuff. No, oh, I, think there, I think there's something to that, though, because, like, at least for me personally, I think because... I started with RPGs like that, that whenever I I try to play an RPG that's in first person, it's more of a struggle for me because like I'm so used to having the characters on screen and they're like doing stuff and it, it makes me feel more connected to them. As Dragon Quest Papo, I have to disagree. I'm going to fight for our right to, you know, embody the other side of the screen, like taking enemies head on. <laughs> strong i'll take you on <laughs> and i'm fancy and i'm fantasy star pat pap here here to agree let me <laughs> i uh, i strong, I, make you <laughs> one. I can do either I, like as a first person dungeon crawler fan i can do i can do either but i i see what you mean well, you're, right? it's cool to well see you're D D pop pop over there pop pop right <laughs> pop yeah. pop old man <laughs> no. i mean historically D D has been exclusively a first person experience True, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Side Spencer, Te- you know, technically, my entire <laughs> life has been a first-person experience. Just so we know, we're all on the same page. That's true. Sick of it. What the? You want that third person? So everything I do is first person. <laughs> Not that's weird. Not Little for me. Variety. For me, most oh, of it's oh, third person. Do you like see yourself from like the back? You're like, yeah, yeah. Got a selfie always... stick up here. And he's just watching. <laughs> yeah, I'm viewing that. You know, it's it, it's always weird to me whenever I'm playing like a first person game, and there's certain sections where it turns third person, like Metroid Prime, where you turn into uh, the morph ball, yeah. which makes sense, right? Like being a morph ball in first person would be terrible, but it's also kind of weird. It's like you're in first person, and you're like, oh, I'm rolling around. This is a little ball. Terrible or great? 
No, that's a, that's a great game. But in first person, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like rolling uncontrollably. <laughs> oh man, that yeah. Ima- imagine in first person going like, <laughs> like two little two little eyes like sticking out in the ball, I'm just getting rolled over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just sick. want that now. Metroid Prime pinball from a first person perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you get all sides of the table. It's like a vomit simulator. I think, Especially in VR. <laughs> oh no! I think I was surprised that you got the ship so early in Provoca. I, I was like, I thought yeah. it would it would be like a whole like getting around the continent, but nope. It was like immediately you get a ship. I think that's because in, in later games, in particular, they make more of a big deal about getting vehicles and stuff, and there's there's always like more of a sense of progression where you're like. Oh, you might have like a little boat and maybe the little boat will will take you to shallow waters and then maybe you'll get a boat that lets you go to deeper waters and then eventually you get like the airship where you can go wherever you want. And then if you if you're a hardcore player, you can get like a chocobo that lets you like walk on mountains and stuff. Mm. Also Dragon Quest guys, so if we get a freaking vehicle, we got to work for it. Yeah. Dragon Quest 2, like that doesn't come easy getting a ship. And even then, yeah, the but ship the, is uh, nice in this one. I mean, like it's it's nice to you do have free roam, free reign to kind of just explore. I did find the adventuring pretty self explanatory, um, with the exception of that dark elf's castle being kind of secluded, and I felt like I got a bunch of encounters. Um, but it's actually refreshing coming from a Dragon Quest perspective, where sometimes it's very unclear what you're supposed to do in the mm-hmm. early NES games, um, and in this one I, I had usually was able to piece together oh yeah well now i have this so i can do this and somebody said this so i can do this yeah i agree there is a little bit of that nes jank where you're just like what am i supposed to do but for the most part i feel like most people can like jump into the game and have minimal need for a guide like again maybe a couple of things but yeah and while yeah with dragon quest it's a little more like what a what? This is an Instagram post from 2017 that I did when I was playing the PSP version, and my favorite enemy is one of the ones you find on the ship. Um, if it'll fucking focus. Um, turn, my bright- <laughs> turn, turn brightness down. Maybe it's too bright. It's yeah, it was a little too yeah, bright. It's that, uh, it's that fucking guy. Oh, <laughs> that, guy yeah, always cra- that guy always cracks me up with his big-ass eyes. <laughs> 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 so every time I fought him on the PSP version of the ship, I was Wait, always like... <laughs> you, I'm surprised. You played that in 2017? There were so many, like, crazy uh, was, games. There were so many crazy just, games coming out in 2017. I was you were playing Final Fantasy 1? <laughs> we are in 2023. Yeah, 2023. Final Fantasy 1. Crazy. Uh, Yakuza uh, Zero came out. Near Automata. I think Disco Elysium came I, out. I beat Near Automata, and then I beat it again yesterday. <laughs> so make that clear. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. Near Automata is like incredible. I didn't cry. All right. Um... Yeah. Sure you didn't, buddy. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. Some other some other stories of the area. Elfheim has a their their prince has fallen into a coma. I think it's their mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I've been there. And then the dwarves are trying to destroy a, a landmass so people can sail past the the little bit of land. A noble cause. Yeah, They're you like, can bring your ship on the other side. It's almost like a Panama Canal kind of situation. Panama. Da-da. Panama. Panama. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Van Halen stopping in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, some pretty cool little stories there. And then, yeah, the Western Keep, he turns on you. It's also up. that sick kingdom where everyone's sick. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne sick. or something? Elrond? Bloodborne? Uh, I was going to say, did you say Bloodborne? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You're not wrong about that either. <laughs> yeah, they, they were sick. You're right. <laughs> sick people in that one. Like, ah, you have the old blood. Um <laughs> uh, But yeah, it was it was cool to 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 like navigate around just the little that little area going back and forth and then uh, eventually 
exploding that landmass so that we can all sail on through. I guess in that way, it's the progression of opening up the world to us. We've also got the big bad boss area, Cavern of the Earth. Yeah, yeah, the the Terra Cavern. Mm hmm. Yeah. So terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that gets us to the to that west little area, Melmond, and then the the Titans Cave and stuff. And that was kind of cool. Yeah. So that I like that they had the giant that ate rubies, and you had to just feed him a ruby so he would leave. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then just going through the, the Terra Cavern and getting the Earth Crystal was kind of nice. Um, there's a it, uh, fake yeah. out. You go through to the end. Yes. There's like a there is something, but it's not the crystal. It's like a yeah, vampire, it's, right? It's vampire. Yeah, yeah it, it was a vampire. I mean, if you think about like for for us now looking, it's like why is there a vampire like in an Earth cave? That doesn't make sense. But if you think about it in terms of like. At the time, I feel like Final Fantasy was made as kind of like, not a response per se, but kind of like a subversion of Dragon Quest. Like, yeah, it makes sense for them to think like, nobody would expect a fucking vampire at the bottom of this cave. <laughs> um, Vincent Valentine was a vampire. I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but like, I feel like when... Because I feel like some of the context of the game is a little lost, and I think it's important to to see the game for what it was at its time mm -hmm. and how it was actually subverting some tropes, or uh, you know, that were prevalent. Yeah, that's a good point. I, is that it? It started almost as a counter. I even, you know, it'd be interesting to see the exact timeline too, because it's. There's a lot of comparisons you could make to Final or Dragon Quest Three, like when you're seeing yep. it, like how they're building. There, there's um, you can pick your party early on. You can, I mean, there's technically changing jobs, although it's more just like an upgrade to your current job. But it's there's still kind of that concept there. Um, although, and I mean, technically, you do choose the jobs at the beginning of the game. You, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, although, yeah, in, in three and five, those games let you switch jobs on the fly. Yeah, but at least, but this one introduced the idea of like, of of the job system. Mm -hmm. So it's, I wonder if they were like talking to each other when they made this, and then Dragon Quest three, if there if there was any like knowledge back and forth being shared between Enix and Square. Yeah, I kind of doubt that. But I, I can't say for sure. More like Square and Bandai. Square and Amco. <laughs> um, Is I, that why I saw Pac-Man in there? <laughs> yeah. I, did, I did read a book about Final Fantasy V specifically. Not one, but like it did offer a little bit of insight on the development uh, of, of how they made their games at the time. And... At the time, um, Dragon Quest was seen as, and it still is, to be fair, but like it's seen as like the JRPG. Um, so a lot, a lot of what they were doing with the Final Fantasy series was, in some way, kind of like a response to Dragon Quest. Uh, but I don't, again, I don't necessarily think that like the developers were like exchanging notes. Mm. Yeah. It's just that there's a lot of similarities there. And I think, let me see. I do. I mean, if, if Final Fantasy was responding, if the games themselves were responses to Dragon Quest, I don't think it's a stretch to say that eventually Dragon Quest was looking to Final Fantasy and making, you know, and kind of making their own responses through the game design. Mm -hmm. That might have been with this. I don't know what the years are for three and Final Fantasy one. In, in Japan, it was. After. Yeah, in Japan it was 88, and then this came out late 87. Final Fantasy came out late 87. Yeah, yeah. and I think the, the turnaround for games around that time was significantly shorter compared to now. Like nowadays, it could take like two, three years for mm -hmm. for them to finish a game. But at the time, it, it took like, you know, 
less than half that. It took it, it, it could take like a single year or like a few months. We had Dragon Quest Two was one year, wasn't it, Teddy? It was just like a year after. Yeah, it was in between. It was within the same year. So crazy fast. But um, yeah. What else can take months? Era Cavern. <laughs> First big area. You got to go in twice. How was your experience in Terra Cavern? Uh, there's a trick with... I don't know if it's in the Game Boy Advance one, but there's a trick you can do with the, the Pixel Remaster where if you enter a room, it actually it shows you on the map all the other rooms in the dungeon. Oh. So it takes all of the guesswork out of like what's if, if a room has a chest in it or not. Mm-hmm. Or stairs, yeah. And so... so- yeah. I want to make a comment about that real quick because, uh, like I said, when I I played the GBA version, and one of the things that really struck me playing the Pixel Remaster was having a mini map because, as you can probably imagine, the GBA being such a tiny little thing, there was no mini map yeah. or map at all. There was a <laughs> world map, but there were no maps for the dungeons. Mm. So I got lost a lot in those fucking dungeons. And I remember it may have been the the this cavern. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but I do remember going into a cavern and being hellaciously stuck for an extremely long time. Oh wow. And I was just and I was just going through that cavern over and over and over and over and over again. And like I don't remember if the solution was not in the cavern, I had to leave, or I don't remember what it was exactly, but like after a certain point, my characters just got really overpowered (laughs) and when i finally figured out what the hell i was supposed to do i just steamrolled the rest of the game yeah (laughs) that that happened to me this not like super lost but because i didn't really follow the guy and i've never played this before i was probably like level 30 by the time i came in here and it is significant this is like half the game already so i was just wiping the floor with these bosses um but one thing that happened to me was uh, some of the enemies on like the third floor can poison you, and I was I didn't like stock up on anti or no no it's not um, poison it's they turn your your warrior guy to stone yeah gold needles I had no gold needles so I was stuck in there with no like escape you know plan with a paralyzed warrior who's my strongest guy yeah. so I was I was terrified that I was going to lose him uh, in the first you know, first time going into this dungeon. Uh, but I miraculously made out. And then Melmond, the freaking town that's closest to this thing, does not sell gold needles. Uh, so I had to go sail all the way back to, like, you know, Bumblefuck Elfville and go buy, like, a dozen gold needles. Um, <laughs> that was an experience. Bumblefuck Damn. Elfville. It's, Bumblefuck. It's worth noting, too, for me, that I had the monk on my team and I picked, I had, I've, I always like to equip people with stuff and I equipped him with the nunchucks because that's like all he could use. And I was like, man, he, he, uh, he does he not sucks. hit very, yeah, he's kind of worthless. Yeah. And then it wasn't till like way later. Cause I, I got the upgrade and everything. And then he was not that great still. And I just read online, like, when does he become strong? Like why, why would you pick the monk? And it was like, He's good if you take off all his weapons. I'm like, oh, and then that's when I I realized yep. you're supposed to have him not use. It. But like, then why give him weapons in the game just to troll me? Yeah. I guess is this the same with the fighter? My fighter was not. He was hitting bosses for like ten damage. You know how like the the range is like it's supposed to be like a hundred, two hundred. Could not hit for shit. Not against uh, bosses. Shock. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Because I, I I remember him being pretty beefy in the GBA version. Huh. I think I had him equipped with weapons, so maybe that's it. Uh, I think the idea as well is that, like, the fighter isn't supposed to have like the highest damage. That's supposed to be the monk. Because if you think about it, um, the knight is supposed to be like a paladin. He's he's supposed to be a tank. He's supposed to be the one that takes all the hits, and yeah, the the sense. the. You know the the monk is and the black mage are the DPS. They're the ones that are supposed to be doing all the damage. Well, you know your white mage or your red mage is supposed to be like your healer, or your hybrid healer. 
Yeah. So it, I think it makes some sense that the fighter doesn't deal the most damage. But at the same time, you should be doing more than 10 damage. That sounds a little too low. I got the impression with the bosses, and I could be wrong on this, but it's almost like they had a like a damage shield. And once you got... Because I noticed that too, like on my harder hitters, at the beginning of boss fights, they weren't hitting very hard. Like they were doing, yeah, like in the 50s or 10s or something, like really, really low numbers. That like regular enemies, they would just wipe the floor with them. And then like the bosses, they didn't do anything. But I felt like like halfway through the boss fights, they their damage stepped up. It was weird. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. This... I don't know if the the balance. I don't know if the balancing is off with the pixel remaster. It sounds weird. Because I again, I don't remember that being the case at all. I like in the GBA version. I remember just like steamrolling through the game. Well, in the pixel remaster, you steamroll too. The the mm. there's not. In fact, the second playthrough I just did for this, I never died once. Uh, it was like, it was just a, in the first time I played, I don't think I died once until the end. Um, it, it's, mm. This is not a difficult game. No. Um, Spencer, we no. got your trophy in the mail. It's on the way. Thank you. Can't wait for it. Um, so, <laughs> are we good to move on from Terra Cavern? Uh, sure. yeah. Wait, I just wanted to say, I don't remember this cavern at all. I remember the vampire. And I remember the like having to come back for the crystal. I don't remember anything else. <laughs> I mean, that's it. You come back for the crystal. That's it. That's literally it. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. I was like, like I'm trying to like think of the layout of the cavern and like, I don't know if it's where I had to play this game a lot, like after work, and it was like super late and I was tired. But I don't remember anything of the layout of this place. I, I will say, like, that's one of the things I do like about the game is the the crystals because. It it gives you like a pretty tangible goal for the game where you're like, like what am I supposed to do? Oh, I have these crystals. I need to, uh, you know, make them shine again. Let's go do that. And then like it's always on screen when you open up the menu. You have the little little crystals, and some are dark and some of them light up when you complete the task. And it it really makes you feel like you have like tangible progress throughout the game. Yeah. I shined my badges in Pokemon Pearl. Yeah, it, it's actually a lot like that. That's a good comparison. Oh, Pokemon! I could after playing this, I definitely saw where Pokemon yeah. got a lot of its stuff from. But my thing with the crystals, I couldn't tell on the menu that they were actually shining after. So I thought I messed up after I. I was like, oh, did I forget to grab the crystal after I teleported out of there? I was like, nothing's happening. I can't like grab it. I think I went back down to try like go get something. I was like, oh yeah, you can't do anything. So I, don't know. I did that too. <laughs> I did that too. I don't feel like such an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Interesting. Well, let's let's go to the other side of the continent. We have um, Crescent Lake is where you're going to get your boat that lets you go through the shallow waters or the rivers, mm, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's um there's three other places to think about the Ice Cavern, Mount Golg, and Lycaon Desert. Pokemon? Lycaon. Crescent, Crescent Lake sounds like a Diddy Kong racing level. Just so we know. Yeah. Crescent Lake. <laughs> well, Crescent Lake was cool because it has the, the wizards like in a big circle. Yeah, the circle of wizards. It's yeah. kind of creepy for an NES game to, to, to do. Yeah, that. I was like, <laughs> is, this a, is this a death cult? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to die? <laughs> I totally should have seen that because that was like a I didn't see it when I first went enter the town. So I was like, is this just a normal ass town that I, you know, I got the sailboat and then <laughs> like I'm here and there's I don't see anything. But uh, you know, it's a very NES thing. There, forever there is an NES thing for something to just be on the outside of the map. And that's where it was. Just like you gotta go in between the shops to get around to go to the freaking wizard circle. Yeah, Dragon Quest used to do that all the time. Yeah, so I should have expected that, but uh so uh, real quick, I just I just wanted to throw this out. So Mount Golg um, was actually uh, kind of reimagined and recreated in Final Fantasy XIV, which I thought was super cool. Mm. Uh, it becomes like it's like a major story event in the Shadowbringers expansion. Okay, where like the you know uh, like the town's people kind of like come together and they create like this giant golem to help the party 
to like advance to uh to where the the villain is like hiding out so that you can like kick his butt. Okay. Excellent. You call people yeah, who live in Mount Golk. Uh, it's not people that live in the mountains, it's like they live like it's like a town near it in in Shadowbringers, he, but like he's setting he set up a joke. Yeah, yeah he's setting up a joke. What do, you, oh. what do you call him, Daddy? Uh, Golgans. Oh, I actually wore my, <laughs> my my Grogu. I have a I have a Grogu shirt for Mount Grogu. I figured that would be wow. This that's is fancy enough. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Figured that would be that. Would, that would, I didn't have Final Fantasy shirts, so I'm I blue I like the slime. Yeah, you, I'm as blue. You can see behind me, this is my castle. Of <laughs> I'll, I'll, I thought you were. I thought you were in front of the uh, the H and R Block logo. Oh, uh, easy misconception. H and R is my castle. H and R Block is my castle. Uh, Mount Golg is where you'll get your your fire crystal, and the ice tavern is where you get. Oh. The, uh, don't, wait, don't, wait, don't wait! Don't tell me. <laughs> is it the Levistone? Yeah, it's the you Levistone, which, him, which, which apparently was named. So the to keep myself on track because I did have a time crunch for this. Um, the guide I was following just to make sure I was like going to the right places was for the NES, and all of the names had like all the items had different names. And the original like like NES guide for this, and Alex, like what? so like I so I would be like. Did I get this? And it would be like a totally different name for the items. Like I forget what the the like 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 later on it's the Rosetta Stone, but it's called like the slab or some shit. And I was like, did I get the slab? Like, what the fuck, <laughs> Alex? What what are you doing with your life? <laughs> you picked the wrong version of the strategy guide. I don't know. It's just the one that I found. <laughs> I come from the guy that pulled the Dragon Quest guide out for the Final Fantasy map out. <laughs> I feel too bad, Alex. <laughs> there's like a whole, there's a whole internet out there, and you picked the the wrong game. I don't know. It's the one that I, it's the game. It's the same game, just <laughs> different names for stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Blame Game this, Facts. This is a challenge run. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge and, and run. Game Facts. <laughs> game oh, Facts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. Yeah, Mount Gulk had the 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 lava on the ground that hurt you barely. So barely, <laughs> yeah, dude. Not which, very good lava. Which again, the, in the pixel remaster, because you can see every every room and what they have in it, you skip a lot of the the guesswork of where to go. Oh my god! And you can actually because you can see the whole map, you can see exactly what direction to take to get to the stairway. So it's like. Yes. There any challenge that would have come from like walking over the lava <laughs> is completely gone because you you just make a beeline. Basically yeah. did that. Yeah. I, at this point, I was just like, just get me through the damn cavern because I saw all these treasure <laughs> chests and rooms to explore. But it's like at the price of stepping over lava, like everywhere to go explore them. So I'm like, yeah, just take me to the freaking end boss here. Mm -hmm. And then if I was playing, you know, the old version, the GBA version, even without the map, that last part before you get to Marilith would have been so cool. Mm. The nine corners of the yeah. room. Because you could just go in one of them and then look at every room. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the one with the big freaking crystal on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, with, with, with that in mind, though, like, do you think that the pistol, uh, the, the pixel remaster, including the mini map, do you think that's a net gain? No. Or, or do you think yeah. like something is lost with having it? Oh, I, if I could turn it off, I would. But then again, we're playing this for a map out, so it's like I just I, I need to get through it. Mm -hmm. But if I was just playing this on my own, I wouldn't use it. Gotcha. I'm the opposite. I I think they should have included an, an objective marker that shows you how many feet away you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at all at all times. <laughs> you are 200 <laughs> steps away. Because <laughs> because I I see it both ways. It's like on one hand, like there. Part of the, the the game is the struggle, right? Like you're supposed to like figure it out yourself, and the map takes away a lot of that challenge. But at the same time, that may not necessarily be what you as a player want out of the game. That may not be what the of the aspect of the game that you care about. So like, I think it's fair to still have it in there for people that are like, I don't want to do this shit. Let me just find the thing and go. Yeah. 
I mean, technically, you could just pull up a guide and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if I really cared about finishing it. But then again, just, I think just having it there makes it you don't want to not use it. You know, this bad grammar, but like just being there makes me want to use it. Well, that's sure. that's the problem. I I think it depends on an individual's like temperance because some people were saying like with the Resident Evil 4 remake that like the the auto sort button they're like oh it's so easy and, and I never touched it. I I I I don't I like I like the item management. I want to be able to place the items how I want. I don't want the button to do it for me so I don't touch it. So I think it at the big uh, it, it, like if you're the type of person that doesn't want to use it, like I, you can, I don't know. I guess it depends on who you are and if you have that restraint. We just mapped out that remake, and I did not know there was an auto sort button. I didn't know <laughs> that either. Yeah. I didn't know either. Three. That's the difference. Is in Final Fantasy Remaster, it's just a button on your Switch. Like it's, it's just you can act. It's, your thumb is over it at all times. The amount mm -hmm. of temperance you need to not press it once is like that's just too much of a big ask mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no yeah i guess it's a little different i, I guess because that's like a, it's more constant i guess i have a controversial opinion on that because i in my opinion it shouldn't be about personal preference it should be about the the game that the designers wanted to make and it's a very anti um i guess inclusive pers perspective but <laughs> that's just how i feel about it so I think the the map telling you everything is literally destructive to what they intended for some of these um some of these dungeons. No, I, I, I hear you. Games. Yeah. No, I, I hear you, but at the same time, then you also get situations like Persona 3, where you can only control the main character and the rest of the party members are AI. Because that's what the director wanted. He wanted to reinforce the idea that you are your own person and you don't have agency over the other characters because they're their own individuals. Mm -hmm. But that also leads to like really stupid moments where the AI is like doing dumb stuff, like trying to like cast like a charm spell on a boss, which doesn't work or, you know, just like stupid moments like that, where it just makes the game frustrating. So mm -hmm. on one hand, yeah, you, you know, uh, I, I get wanting to like respect the artistic vision of the creators, but then that artistic vision can lead to like, an in like a worse do, experience but don't but you think in, in okay. terms of this game though sorry do you think it's the artistic vision or the limitation because this was an nes game where the rules weren't really set in stone yet i don't think it's either i think it's the uh, uh, let's make it a, let's cater to modern gamers I think, but 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 i'm but saying is, back, is, back the vision, when the game was being right? made if they could include a mini map do you think they would have included a minimap? Not because to not I to think the, that's just limitation. Not to the degree of the pixel remaster. Because the okay. pixel the pixel remaster, you can literally walk into a room and then it'll tell you every other room in the in the dungeon that has a a, a treasure chest in it. A set of well, stairs. Yeah. Well, so I think, I think, yeah. I think it's also important to consider though that the game, if they if they made the game with a mini map in mind, then I don't think these areas would have been designed the same they would have been designed differently with the mini map you know in consideration so the the fact of the matter is these were maps that were made the way they were and this is a mini map being added later on after the fact yeah so it's it's very different listen we're mappers we got map appreciation here we're just we're very critical of them you know we want to we want to get to the bottom of what is the real map yeah, I, I think kind of think think of it like this. Like, let's say you make a a platformer with a with where you can only you don't have a double jump, and then they remaster it and add a double jump later. Those maps were still made; those air those levels were still made as if you only had the singular jump and not the double jump. Yeah. Ease mode. I couldn't what? find the double jump in this game. I tried. It I'm was just saying uh, the mini map is uh, cheese mode. It's like uh, it's, it's yeah, just yeah. playing the game on super easy. So, it's a, it's a little cheesy, a little gouda. <laughs> I like cheese. I mean, no. I'll be Jack here. Good cheese. <laughs> Not for good cheese. <laughs> a little smoked gouda don't hurt no one. Uh, the the ice cavern was was what it was. I don't know. It didn't. 
I did get stuck here for a second because I didn't see a spot on the ground where I had to fall through. Mm. One spot. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I remember I was I went through this cave like for like thirty minutes, and I was also watching Hell's Kitchen and like this the thought of Gordon Ramsay yelling while I'm trying to fucking figure out where I'm going, going like back up and down and up and down and up and down. And then finally I was like, I found the spot in the ground and I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and which. <laughs> Oh man, I I, I got stuck here. Favorite part, too. favorite part was just canoeing there. Oh, you like the can? You, you're a canoe man. I do like the canoe. I don't think it's an RPG staple. Bring back the canoe. Hashtag bring back the canoe. Final Fantasy Sixteen. I want canoe action. All right. I want my main party member in a kayak, four person kayak. Join for kayak the- party. Join the canoe movement. <laughs> I, you know, Final Fantasy VII did not have a canoe. What it had was uh, a plane that was broken, but it would it, it would it would float on the water, and it and it could only go through that. shallow shallow waters. So that yeah. that was your canoe. <laughs> yeah, that which is pretty. That better. I think it's I think it's yeah. clever at least. Yeah. Modern day canoe. I can appreciate that. And then here's where I got stuck for a second was the Lycaon Desert. I I was I had all the the stuff like I was ready to go and I was like, what do I do? And I was just kind of running around. I realized I hadn't gone there yet, and I said, oh okay, that's it. And then I and then it just like a small cutscene happened, and then you get your airship. <laughs> you know, this is a whole pixel remaster where they map out every single thing in every dungeon to the damn stairs, and they don't signify that you're in an area. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is the desert. It just looks like a sandy area. Like I don't, just, I don't. Like, yeah. It's not the desert, you know. And also, was there a signifier that like you're supposed to bring the Levistone in front of the mountains? Did a character say know. this? I didn't get anything. Maybe there's somebody. Uh, I think that. Maybe? I think that's some like NES ass crypticism. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I would have been where, pissed. Where it's like you like finally it. figure it out after like three days and you like go to the you go back to school and you're like, guys, I figured out how to get the airship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta I gotta ask, do you think do you guys think this game is to blame for all those fucking ice levels and caves and every subsequent RPG ever? Um like is this game not, to blame? I'm not as I'm not as familiar. Did did Dragon Quest have an ice area? I'm yeah, I'm not as familiar with Dragon Quest, so I'm not I don't I don't think it was in the first rank. I'm pretty sure it's not in Dragon Quest one, but I don't know about two. Two has a lava place for sure. But that's not ice, Spencer. I like the opposite. There's the cave of, of Rhone. Thank you, Alex. I, I'm trying to <laughs> He's known for long caves. That's I don't think what, and, uh, Omni Hill on the boss. But... I'm not saying this was the first ice cave ever in a video game, but maybe the first one in an RPG. Maybe. Probably, probably the first one in an RPG. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just said need, maybe because they were to, like three. I need, to beat, <laughs> need to beat Fantasy Star One and get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> I did beat Fantasy Star One. I don't think no, it I has did. any ice ice areas. It, it, well, the, the third the third planet's snowy, isn't it? Yeah. It's all snow. You're right. You're right about that. But did Fantasy Star one? I thought that was eighty nine. I think that's after Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Let me check uh, Fantasy Star. Um, but yeah, there, it was too good. I don't know because Come so this this ice cavern. I guess okay, they they, oh, they came out the same year. Oh. This, okay. So Fantasy Star came out December 20, 1987. Okay. Oh, and this came out December eighteenth. 1987. Whoa, two days. Two wow. days. Final first Fantasy did cave. it first. Yeah. Two days. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Fantasy Star is pretty sick, by the way. Like that, it is a good that game. original fan. It's a really good game. Uh you should play it on the Switch. That's where it's I'm playing super, it. Yeah. Super it's, good version. It's fantastic. Fantasy Star 2, though, makes me want to gouge my eyes out. <laughs> uh, I haven't played two. I've only played one. A tip, don't. <laughs> I kind of want to do it because I liked one so two, much. I'm like, I feel well, two obligated. Two was like half baked. Two was like rushed for Genesis launch, I believe. Hmm. It's fine. You know, it's not people's least favorite. That'll be three, but uh, and it's rough. I'm just saying. Most people's favorite seems to either be one or four. 
I'm down Beefy to play four. Zero on the DS. That's an actual game. One yeah. one is surprisingly good. Like I'm like yes. legitimately, I was playing it. Like there's no yeah. reason it should be this good. It's kind of bizarre. It, the music slaps. The 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 graphics are colorful and like the the different planets are cool. The biggest issue with the game is I think more than like Final Fantasy One or Dragon Quest is that it has that kind of like NES BS of like you're supposed to take this specific item to this person that you've never met before and nobody mentions them and then you have to like dig in this one island you have no reason to use a shovel here to get a key it's like just bs <laughs> like that can i say i kind of like that i mean i don't i think that's what holds I, me back from liking a lot of uh, older like, maybe. like this game included yeah. yeah i'm not i'm not a i'm I, not a fan i was I, I remember one specific thing i did i was like at first, I was angry because like, I was like, how the hell was I supposed to know to do this? Except that I had to go into this dungeon like three times just looking for it. And then I was like, I kind of feel good about that. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that it made me do that. I don't know. I, I, I liked it. Aside from well, that, it's a different fantasy. Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, back Spelled to the... different. <laughs> back to the, the fantasy. Now, of the finals. Now you yeah. can fly... And we got to talk about. I guess we could make a pit stop at Cardia Islands. Do should we do that or should we do? Um... Kardashians. Let's do. Car- to say it at the at the Kardashian Island. Let's do the Kardashian Islands real quick. Uh, but really, yeah, all Kim, that is, is the the dragons uh, and the Kardashians. <laughs> your dragon Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's Chloe. Um, but okay. there's a. There we go. There's the islands. You know their names? Oh yeah, my my girlfriend watches all of that, so I I know. I, <laughs> I don't know their names. I, well, I, I don't yeah, care either. The, the, how many? One, right? <laughs> okay, this is the new test. How many Kardashians are there, and what are their names? Oh God, I have no idea. Kardashian no. test. I know. I know. Uh, the, I have no idea. There's Kim. Kim. There's Chloe. Chloe. Fuck. Chloe. Jade. <laughs> On. Wait, this is not coming to me anywhere. The mom is... I can't remember her mom name. Kardashian? Mom Kardashian. Mom Kardashian. Obviously, Lara. there's Bruce Jenner. I don't know if you, or Caitlyn Jenner now. I guess that's her new name. And then there's... Oh, shit. Thirty guy Kardashians? Yes, they they have a brother. I can't remember his yeah. name. Brother, I can't... brother Kardashian. Yeah, it's just brother. Um, there's other sister... Uh, yeah. Sorry, and then there's a bunch of kids now, so there's a bunch of like children. Like there's a there's the girl that's really big now and like makeup. I can't remember their names. I'm bad with names anyway. But there's there's a whole. Now, ga- can you name all the? Can you name all the Berenstain Bears? No. There's brother yeah. and sister, right? And then dad and mom. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have names. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a brother, sister, mom, dad, grandpa. They should make a Berenstain <laughs> Bears reality show. We're like the the the, the Berenstains, yeah, yeah. Like the mom gets like fake tits and is like trying to ew. <laughs> hey, I, I, they're they're bare they're bare tits. Yeah, they're they're bare <laughs> breasts. It's fine. So they're are they breasts. furry? Yeah, man. Hey, I got you guys. There are four Kardashian children. To I, thought the main us, but the, I thought you were gonna tell us the Berenstain bears. No, <laughs> you can do that. So we got Kim. We got Chloe, and then there's two more, a guy and a girl. And you yeah. get either. Adam. Uh, the girl, I can't remember the, the I just can't. I don't, I don't know. So this is with a K. Because it's a, yes. they, they named them all the K's. Uh, I know that Kanye was married to one of them. Kanye. Kanye was married to Kim. W- was, right? Yeah. Like, I yeah. think they divorced. Yeah. It's uh um, good for good for her to get away from that freaking <laughs> crazy person. What are you talking about? He's fine. <laughs> I I, th- I think our definitions of fine are not the same. <laughs> uh uh something with a K, but it's I don't know. It's not you get the guy. No. Kraus Adam. Was that him right? <laughs> I don't know. The guy and a girl, I guess. Alex, you got a girl guess? Oh, uh, uh, Samantha. Oh, I know the girl's name. That's a good one. 
yeah. come back to you. Let's do Daniel first. Okay. He's... Wait, what do you mean me first? First. So there's two more left. We got Chloe and we got Kim. Who are the what? other two Kardashians? One's a guy and one's a girl. You can guess. I, I have no idea. I know. Just, I just know. Throw out, just throw out some names. In just the recesses of your mind and throw a guess. Yeah. Ken. Good guess. And then the girl? Kimberly? Spencer. Enlighten us. <laughs> Courtney. I knew it. The guy? I don't know. <laughs> Courtney. Uh, Courtney was the guy. Ted. <laughs> it was Rob. Rob. It. Okay. Yeah. Rob. Okay. I got robbed of that. <laughs> Next time we'll quiz you on their grandchildren. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the Cardia Islands, and the, basically this is the Citadel of Trials, <laughs> so you can get your upgrades to your classes. Um, yeah, Citadel of Trials. Uh, I, I always loved like the sprites, yeah. the sprite changes. Um, in the in the original like NES versions, they just got like super buff. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, that's sick. Yeah, and, it's and basically the, uh, the same in this one. Um, yeah, but in the GBA version, they made them look like they they actually changed the way that they looked. Like they they didn't just get buff. Like, um, like the the warrior, the fighter, he would become like a paladin and. I think that the uh, the monk turned he he looked more like a like a kung fu master or something. Yeah, they changed the their like clothes and shit. Yeah. Warrior yeah, gets a military cut. Uh the fighter just gets buff. The red mage gets like a pimp hat and then the black mage masks himself. One becomes a ninja, right? Is it the thief? Yeah. Come it becomes a ninja? Yeah. My black mage took his hood down, and showed he was blonde haired and White, I was just let down. <laughs> You're not black at all. <laughs> <laughs> you lied. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's just a white mage. Get him out. Was there? Get him out of here. I'm not super familiar with like the original US release of this game. Was did 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 they do the same sort of thing Dragon Quest did where they tried to, you know, like it's Dragon Warrior, where, where they tried to like appeal to more of like the Western like fantasy themes? With like the art style, do you guys know anything about that? Uh, kinda. I think like if you look at the cover, look if you look at the cover of the original Final Fantasy for NES, like there's no characters on it. It's just like a sword and like an, an axe, axe oh, okay. and like an orb with like I think a castle in it or something. But I mean, it so, looks it looks very D and D ish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because like I'm yeah. only familiar with like the original Japanese artwork for like the first three games, which are fucking beautiful, by the way. And um, so, like, the idea of, like, having these really buff characters like that just seems a little out of place to me. But maybe in that sort of fantasy setting, it would work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start with the going to the west of the Cardi Islands. It's the we have the Waterfall Cavern, the Desert Caravan, the city of Onrak, and, of course, the Sunken Shrine that has the water crystal in it. The Kraken. The Kraken. <laughs> Unleash the Kraken. <laughs> Unleash the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> What's Kraken? Yeah. Uh, and also, Kraken lacking. <laughs> you do have to go over to the city of Gaia, which is on the other side, but to get um, the fairy water bubble situation. Oh, oh boy, did I have to. <laughs> <laughs> did I ever? Did I ever? <laughs> this guy right here. He's in Gaia. This is Gaia. Do you guys? Um, this guy. I think it's really cool that you have to do all these things to see get the the boat to have like a bubble that you can breathe in to go to another like hidden world. I didn't so, expect uh, that. Re so real quick, I posted it in the chat, but like there you can see like in the GBA version where like I think this might also be the PSP sprites where. After yeah. the class change, they didn't just get buff, but like their their actual sprites looked more like like they actually like went through some sort of change. Yeah, that that looks familiar. Which you know, the PSP version, GB version, I think are basically almost the same. Yeah, they're like, they're very con similar. Some like content changes, yeah. yeah. But, which I think this is a lot cooler than just making them look like they they just like took steroids. I don't know. Steroids are cool. 
Teach their own on that. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> the buff. To look. each their own. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the uh, the sunken shrine on my first playthrough, I actually had to go to a guide because of it, not to beat it, but because there's an item in the sunken shrine that you need, and I mm. didn't know how to get it. I didn't realize I was even supposed to get it from there on my first playthrough. But that's where you get yeah, Rosetta the, Stone. The Rosetta Stone, yeah. And but what language did you learn? Uh, Korean. Or on my guide, it's the slab, which reminded me of Courage. Return the slab. <laughs> Is that a Courage the Dog? Yeah, Courage the Coward the Dog. There's an episode with this. this about, you guys, it's fine. There's, you I, slabber all over it. Yeah. <laughs> Muriel. But but yeah, so so yeah, this in the shrine you it's on the top level. You actually have to go left instead of going like following the normal what? path. What? <laughs> which takes you uh, which it doesn't work like that in any other part of the game, but it loops you to the other side and then you can get into a treasure chest that has what you need. Came an I, arcade I, game. I, well, I did that first by accident. Oh, <laughs> damn. Yeah. I, I was like, what's over that. here? <laughs> yeah, my first playthrough, I was completely lost at this point because I, I knew I, what I had to do, but it, I couldn't get it. So I was like, what the fuck? Where, where am I supposed to get a Rosetta Stone? And then it turns out it was in underneath the, the sea. Yeah, it, just, it was the one chest I did not get because I went to the top part first before I went to the crack because I didn't know what I'm doing. And of course, I'm over relying on the map. So. I was like, oh, there's one chest I can't get to? That's all right. I'll probably figure it out later. Or I don't need it. It's the one damn chest you need. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's better to get the the Rosetta Stone that way than by playing uh, Double Dragon 3. Oh, you get a Rosetta Stone in that? That's that's what the game is called. Oh, it's called the Rosetta Stone? The dr- Double Dragon Three, the Rosetta Stone. It is the worst dragon double dragon game. <laughs> it's like this, every version of it sucks, except for like maybe the NES version. Even then, it's like, eh, not great. Uh. Sucking is a language anyone can understand. <laughs> quote, quote of the year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a statement. Coming from. Coming from Teddy, we're all better. For, all right, Teddy, for hearing that. I'm not. I don't. I don't know what the context of that was, but <laughs> Dragon Three sucks. There you go. It, yeah, it, Set it, a stone. Don't... Language. Get it. <laughs> all right, there we go. It, it'll brain click blast later af- after the, the show. brain yeah. blast. Got it. All right, moving on from that. Are we good to move on to the last continent? Wait, we didn't fight the kraken. Okay. Fight the Kraken. Fight the Kraken. Release the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I fought him. <laughs> Duck. I fought the Kraken. <laughs> you won. <laughs> right. Would you Would you rather fight the Kraken or the Crackhead outside of Seven Eleven? I feel like the Kraken would be a better story. What What's my loadout? Hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Teddy, what's the loadout? <laughs> yeah, the party, like the weapons and stuff. Yeah, no, just Daniel's loadout. Just him my, what's my loadout? <laughs> loadout. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I do I got on? Mind. <laughs> you got a. You got a. Okay. You got. Is that? Because that de- okay, wait, wait, that determines yeah. a lot. Okay. okay so you, gotta... you have a Slurpee. <laughs> um. You have the uh, plastic utensils from Burger King. Okay. 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 Interesting. And. You have a roll of bounty paper towels. Okay, I'm gonna take my chances with the Kraken. Quite <laughs> <laughs> it work. Yeah, what's your tactic? I feel for, like I for taking I, out the crackhead. Okay. What attack would I use on the crackhead? Yeah, I, I I would pray. You throw all those items away and just pray. Communicate through God. <laughs> <laughs> Help me through this trial. <laughs> hey crackhead listen i've got a great prayer do you want to do it with me talk to god <laughs> talk to god 
Uh, you picked the Kraken, so I want to know how the 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 silverware Slurpee and the bounty paper towels work. That Kraken becomes lunch. Damn. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. And I have a Slurpee for a drink. Yeah, I like some some calamari going on there. Yeah, boy. <laughs> towels, clean the plate. Go I'm ahead. good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our final continent is has a Lufenia, a group of people that speak a language you don't understand, unless you have the Rosetta Stone. Then Luffy'd. What? Wait, didn't we get that? Yeah. Okay. Or you're supposed to. And then the Mirage Tower, a flying fortress. I couldn't see it. It was just a Mirage Tower. Oh, man. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is on fire today. Thank you. Try my hardest. Yeah, the <laughs> Just fire like dishing out those bangers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of story packed within the Mirage Tower, which I found interesting that they they wanted to just pack it full of lore. But yeah, this, be this, story. this be game story. This game's story is very front and back loaded. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fantasy elements. <laughs> uh, but Mirage Tower is a pretty cool, pretty cool si- situation there. And, and like uh, flying up in the air is really neat. Um, clearly, they Final Fantasy has always been into like a little bit different of a fantasy, like a stronger fantasy than like a Dragon Quest. They like they've even from the beginning we can see they were they were interested in like technology as part of the lore as opposed to just pure magic i feel like dragon quest is far more whimsical while final fantasy takes a bit of a harder edge yeah yep uh this is where alex could not beat the boss because he didn't have the bane skill couldn't do it couldn't do it didn't get bane i don't know what i was doing wrong dude I, I did find out during this conversation that what I was doing wrong was that I had the monk equipped with stuff. <laughs> so that was that was the, the wrong the, move. The problem was that you merely adopted the darkness. Yes. You were not molded by it. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you try replaying it but being molded by the darkness. Or but no, adopting it. Or or molding. I it. tried Timmy. Timmy, the boss because I don't know how to say it, so I'm gonna call it Timmy. Timmy? The boss of this uh, area. Yeah. Hey, from it. Undertale? Is Timmy from Undertale? There, there, there is a character in Undertale called Timmy, and she's was, kind of like a, she's like a joke Timmy, character. Timmy Turner from the Fairly Oh, Outfits. Timmy. Uh, Timmy yeah. Turner. No, Timmy is like with T E M E or M M E, something like that. Meh. It, she's, Timmy. she's a, <laughs> Timmy and the Lord Timmy. of the Underworld. <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> The final boss in Final Fantasy. <laughs> 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 It'd be amazing. <laughs> which ironic. That's that's funny because in I I'm trying to remember in South Park the game, which is a fantastic game. Oh, if, the stick of truth. He was like Timmy was like the warp. He would like roll okay. the carriage. Mm. Remember because you hit like Gallop, like duk, 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 and he would he would like roll in with the little wagon. Oh, and then you get in. <laughs> I, I love that game too. That is a really <laughs> surprisingly great game. <laughs> Have you guys ever considered doing a map out on Undertale? I think that'd be interesting. It would be the problem with that one is I th- I think it would take a lot of time. And not really, it's it's not a long game. Well, you got to play it like three times. I would say you need to play it twice at most. You don't need to do like the genocide route. That's like the the route that's like a really big pain in the butt to do. I but like I think the problem with that game is that if you do if you don't go all in with that, the fans get kind of angry. Like they're like, "Well, you didn't do it this way." And then it's like, "Oh yeah, I guess." I don't know. Uh, f- forget what they say. It's a great Dude, game. Uh, it is. It's a great I like game. Sonic. What do you expect from me? I like Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, if you want if you want to minimize the amount of time on the game so it's not like super long, I would recommend your first playthrough um to do it without killing anyone. And then 
from there, the game like actually gives you kind of a break where you don't have to restart the whole game from the beginning. Um, so that for your second playthrough, you start at like a, I think at sort of like a middle ish point, then you can make the, the necessary changes from there to get the pacifist ending. Mm. And that, that, that will make your playthrough a lot more manageable, uh, in time wise. Well, if we ever do it, we're going to put it on the record at the beginning of the episode that Daniel gave us the pass to play it twice. You're our shield. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't need, I, you really don't need to play through the genocide route. If anything, I would recommend uh, just watching someone give you like a clip notes version of what happens because you don't need to sit there because like what the, the way to get the genocide route is super annoying intentionally. Where you're supposed to kill every, nearly every single enemy in the game, and that's just really needlessly time-consuming, and it's it's meant to be a pain in the butt. To it's 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 a it's a route that's not meant to be enjoyed. It's a route. It, it's not supposed to be fun. What if I only yeah. do the genocide route? Some what is do. it? Yeah, well, yeah. What if I only do the genocide route? What if there's three button mappers? So what if each of us oh, take a route? Oh, that's kind of mm. genius. Um, right, well, you have, uh, unfortunately you have to get a normal ending first Spencer. before, before you get the, 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 the pacifist ending. Spencer will beat the normal ending and send me his memory card. Cause we're playing this on a memory card. Apparently yeah. um, I feel bad for, I feel bad for anyone that wants to just do the genocide route because that's the hardest, by far the <laughs> hardest version of the game to play. Like, like Alex. not version, but like, that's like the hardest route of the game by well, far. I clear I, I could clearly beat Final Fantasy. You would do well in crunch, so. Undertale is uh, you would do well in Undertale because it's a lot of uh, bullet hell. Yeah, I've played a little bit of it. I haven't gotten into it, but I played like the first hour or so and I was like, this is neat. It's is really neat. good. <laughs> like I strongly recommend like even if you don't do a video on it, I it's just a really friggin' good game. Just just I I, I give it my stamp of approval. Can you can you can you use the stamp uh, motion again? I want to do a sound for it. Alex pretending that Alex pretending that he does editing or anything. Mike didn't even. Did, no, well, sound. no, well, I, I'm stamp. doing like editing right now. It's like real time. Editing. You got to make it louder. In your in your head. You got to make it louder because yeah. it didn't come through. Oh, sorry. Try again. Ready? Try again. There you go. How about that? It still didn't come through. You got it didn't come through. It's not picking up my sounds. It's it's, I heard, it's Discord. I heard something. Discord does a thing where if it doesn't it doesn't register a certain tone or something, oh, it'll yeah, yeah, rule yeah. it out. Like octave. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If 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 I was doing it, it in a in a tone that only dogs could hear. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, do an on do, 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 do like you an dog. Do like an <laughs> onomatopoeia, like a wow hey, kind of thing for a stamp. Like, okay. Something loud. Ready. One more time. This is the last time. Ready? Okay. Kablam! There we go. Nice. <laughs> Stamp. There I was trying to make it more subtle, but I couldn't do it. Thank you, Discord. You try to do a subtle kablam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> kablam. 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 <laughs> like kablam. That's a good stamp sound. <laughs> well, kablam. Well, boys, we have a we have our four crystals. We didn't talk about Alex's horror story. Well, we kind of did. Oh, I got my ass kicked for an hour, and then I went to bed, and that was it. <laughs> and, and then and then you started recording this podcast. Yeah, basically. Well, I I, I could have played yesterday, but not really. I was gone, so <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Terry, do your worst. All right, and now we all Terry. Can... Terry, do do your best. Convert. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only want what's best for Terry. Don't 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 say do it worst. He he needs to do his best. <laughs> okay. I only want the best for him. Do your best, Terry. Uh, and we converge on the Temple of Chaos and go back in time, two thousand years. Uh, Man, that threw me off when I played the PSP version. I was like, this is a time travel plot. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the thing I really like about the time travel plot is that. If you think about it, it recontextualizes how you replay the game. Because if you think about it, um, when you start the game, you're starting off on like a previous playthrough, right? You're kind of picking back up because of because of the way that the 
the uh, the paradox works. I don't understand yeah, that uh, part. Yeah, because yeah, so like the the way that the 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 time travel works is like because of what you did in the past, that's what sets up the events of the game to happen. It's a it's oh, a okay, time yeah. loop. Where it's it's and, current, and it's the constantly four warriors repeating. light and stuff. Okay, that makes sense. It's but, constantly repeating. So in actuality, when you replay the game, you're just continuing the time loop. But see, and this is just a problem with with time travel stories like this. Where did the first Warriors of Light come from? It's a time travel thing. It yeah, doesn't it's, make a hundred. It's, 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 right? it's never going to make a hundred percent sense. Because it's like four four Warriors of Light show up at the castle. Okay, is this like a regular occurrence that Warriors of Light appear? And it's like, well, <laughs> it makes sense for all the time loop ones to do it. But what about the first one? Like, how did the first ones start? We don't know. That's never explained. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's it's in the NES game. What do you want? <laughs> Why couldn't that have happened in the, uh, the original timeline? Warriors of Light just yeah, it could, it, it could have con- yeah, it could have conceivably well, be, happened. It could conceivably happen, but we're we're presented with the loop part where four mm-hmm. warriors show up and do it. But like, where? What's their story? Because are they like where do they come from? Because we we just yeah, see them. Constantly. There's no legend. Yeah, there's no legend. There's no I legend. wonder if this is. Uh, I wonder if this is expounded upon in Stranger of Paradise. Final I hope Fantasy not, Origin. because that has that fucking Limp Biscuit song. The the moment I saw there was a Limp Biscuit song in that game, I was like, oh, I'm not playing this. I no, mean. it's actually it's not actually a Limp Biscuit song. What is it? What what is it? It is a song made for the game. Oh. Is it's it a, not. Is it not Limp Biscuit? It's, it's not officially Limp Biscuit. No, they did not make a game. They did not make a song for the game. It is just a song in the game. So you, you better get it. It's fucking. It's actually a fun game if you like Souls likes, um, and it, especially if you like Neo. Uh, which was Team Ninja's take on like the Souls formula. If you enjoy those games, it's actually pretty good. It's actually a fun game. Neo is my favorite character in the Matrix. So, Limp Biscuit went back in time. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Limp Biscuit. It's one of those days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chains. A what? <laughs> but you know what time it is. That's just the it's audience asking loaded. asking what a chainsaw is. <laughs> what a chainsaw what a <laughs> fucking chainsaw what <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, all right well you go back in time i and... just love the idea now of there being a prophecy of limp biscuit and it's just it's they went back in time and set the prophecy in motion as was foretold they're like it's just one of those days yeah <laughs> 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 it was like someday we'll like uncover an ancient tomb and like we dust off the 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 stone relics, and it'll say like Fred Durst on it. Yeah, <laughs> Chuck <cap>. Starfish. <laughs> the starfish the with legend. the cap on it. Yeah, <laughs> the legend of the chocolate starfish. <laughs> and under it says, "Still sucks." Oh, <laughs> come on now. Oh, good baselines. I'll we'll say that. Poor Fred Durst. Did you know he was a playable character in the Fight Club PS2 game? Yeah. F- uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. no, let's go back to Final Fantasy. <laughs> right. So you go back in time, and now uh, you got to kill the Garland from years past, who's created this time yeah. loop to to destroy. Who is now Chaos? Sonic Adventure. I couldn't remember Chaos his name. Control. I was talking to Teddy, and I kept calling. I was like, "Was his name Greg? What can't remember the fuck this guy's name was." was Greg, yeah. <laughs> Greg the Chaos Champion. Um and yeah, it was it's a you know, on my first playthrough, I actually died a couple times to this boss because he's pretty hard. Uh, I think the second time I just farmed a lot more, uh, but Pro Gamer Spencer. Well this this is a this conversation's only for people that have, that have beaten the game. Oh, should I leave? Why don't you uh should I, should I go over there? 
Alex, why don't you make yourself scarce? Should I? Yeah, go go there so we can still see you, because I can still see you in that yeah. room. <laughs> I'll, I'll like back there in my in my living room. In the living room, please. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna go sit on that chair over there. Hold on, let me. You guys enjoy the map out. Okay. Just, but stay in. Go. Hold on. Are you? Oh, he's. I want to make sure that he stays in view so we can still see him. He's, I think he's gonna do. He it. will. Yeah, yeah, he's he's gonna do it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text him when it's when when we're we're done. Okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. We're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, you we we beat chaos and uh, and everyone's happy. Did you guys have a hard time with this boss fight or how was it for you guys? Nah. Not a hard time. Uh. Okay. So the first time that I did it, um team was like level 50 or so and as a cure-all spell i got caught in cycles of like having to keep reviving my party and i didn't really stock up on items um no i did actually i think i i think i spent all of my currency to max out phoenix downs x potions and ethers just to make sure i was fully prepared for the battle but i i i think he used the cure-all uh, to restore 9,999 HP. And that's what uh, that's what did me in the first time. So I, I, mm. I had respawned, and it had auto-saved right at the start of the level, which was nice. Um, I didn't have to start the whole dungeon over. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I just grinded for like five more levels because, you know, it's pretty quick. And uh, I think then my strategy was uh, temper the warrior and do protect to increase defense for everybody and then i think he used fire a lot so i used no i don't think no blaze really worked though um and then with the black mage i think my thing was uh to keep using blaze all the fire like the the highest fire level move and um that was about it and i think that's when i won Similar strat, yeah. My mine was similar. Yeah, uh, the first time I played, I had to grind. I think the second time, I just had naturally grinded a lot more, so I was I didn't mm -hmm. have a problem. But same, Alex. I know you did beat this in the past, so go ahead. I don't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was, it was, again, this was, was I don't, dude, I, dude, dude. I beat fucking Mass Effect in like. 2019 and i couldn't tell you half the shit about that game now either so, like, so you have like the um, memory of but, a goldfish but clearly let me make up what i did oh, I, I did wait. a i my warrior did a, a a double front flip and it kicked him in the face sure. yeah and then my black mage cast a, a a brand new spell i just got um where he turned him into a strip of bacon uh wow. it's pretty crazy it um is. yeah and then the <laughs> the monk, uh, he ate the bacon. So that was expensive. Right. You got a nice, nice strip of bacon. Protein. Um, yeah. And then the white mage, he was just there. I don't know what he was you know, really doing. Anything. He was just what's there. he even doing? Yeah. What's he doing? Do? The <laughs> white. <laughs> and that's Final Fantasy. Woo! Woo! Finally. Yeah. Final one ever, ever again. Never yeah, again. Never, they'll never make another. Did you guys know that it wasn't actually called that because it was the last game? They wanted to call it Fighting Fantasy. But they this is true because the name was already taken. I hate that fucking way people are like, it was called Final Fantasy because it was their last game they could make. And it's like, that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we could just drop Final. We could just call it Fantasy. We played Fantasy. Yeah, we played Fantasy. We Ooh. did. If you, if you could change the first word to something else with F, what would you choose? My first pick is Flannel Fantasy. Uh, I thought you'd go for Flatulent. <laughs> like flatulent Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be Fetal Fantasy. It's just trying oh. to escape the womb. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's the same game, but everybody has a nice flannel on. Mm, that's cute. Uh, uh, falafel fantasy. Ooh. 
Those are good. Yeah. Get four falafels. Mm-hmm. Which party is falafels? Yeah. It's a, it's a very tasty adventure. It's down, we're like falafel down. Mm-hmm. It's a real Flamingo, nice pick me up. Fantasy, fantasy with flamingos. So you, chocobos are basically flamingos. Yeah, that's true. Uh the yeah, yeah. Would you guys way. eat chocobo? Because I would. If if like they fried up some uh, chocobo, no. I would eat one. They're, eat that. they're too would, cute, man. I would eat it raw, like like living. I oh would, yeah, just like it walks by and Spencer's just. I would tackle attack. it, yeah, and just drill my teeth into it. Well, they're chocolate, like right? Yeah, chocobo. Chocolate bows. <laughs> this is so. You, wrong. you could eat it raw. Hell yeah, dude! Just go to town. Hot on chocolate. It. chocolate. This is bow. so wrong, man. Leave the poor <laughs> chocobos alone. I'd like to snap <laughs> Listen. it. Like <laughs> grab it by its beak and rip it open like this. And just so you it's had an Easter Christ, bunny, dude. right? Daniel? Would you rather eat would you rather eat a chocobo or a moogle? I guess that's the question. Oh fuck. I mean I mean if I had a choice between the two, at least a chocobo looks like a big chicken. Yeah. A moogle a moogle is just like what there's like no there's like no real world comparison. So it's like Mochi. <laughs> mochi. You no know, mo like the Japanese snack. Yeah, yeah, mochi's good. Mochi oh, ice cream. No. My mom's cat's good, named though. Mochi. <laughs> what if it's like a little? And I named it that. <laughs> what if it's like a little teddy bear, a little a coop or a, a moogle? Have we had bear meat? I've never, and probably will never. <laughs> I, I would, would. I would eat a bear for sure. Yeah, I would. No way. If somebody offered me some bear. I'd do. You it. guys have very exotic taste in food. Yes. Talking about Please eating chocobos and boogles and bears. <laughs> we have different definitions of the word. Exactly. I'm all about that protein. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. You got to get your protein in. Get it from the bears. Bears probably have a lot. A little bit bears of do fat. For me. Bears do for me. Exactly. The bear steam bears might, might protest. Ooh. Oh, protesting only makes me hungry. Which, which of the bear and steam <laughs> bears would you eat first? I guess that's the question now. What are their names? Oh, Brother no. Bear, Sister Bear, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Papa Mama, bear. Mama, bear. Mama Bear, Mama Bear, Mama Bear. I'm going for Brother Bear because that movie sucked. At least you, Sister Bear, Daniel. Uh, no <laughs> thanks. I'll pass. I'm little not hungry. A little stringy, a little gamey. <laughs> Must choose one. Well, boys, um, that's Final Fantasy. What are your experiences of, of playing Final Fantasy One? What do you think? It was good. You know, I actually, I probably will keep playing because I mean, you know, I dumped eight hours in, and I'm close to the end anyway. I just uh, need to figure out what's wrong with me and why I can't <laughs> defeat this fucking boss. <laughs> yep. I had a great time. I might like this more than Final Fantasy VII. Hot take. Oh, oh. Um, I thought you were gonna say Dragon Quest. What? I was like, I was like that. <laughs> I I can't agree with that. <laughs> like, I don't have agree. to because you're not me. Damn. I'm definitely not. <laughs> uh, no, I think the only thing is, uh, I do. If I could redo it, I would redo it without a mini map. Just kind of play it. That authentic. Well, you can redo it. I know it me. now, so like it takes away the oh. purpose. I could still tell you that in the like Mount Gold, the freaking stairs are in the bottom left corner. So I give it like five years. Are you interested in the other pixel remasters? Yeah, I think so. Did you get all of them or just the one? Just so one, but I mean they're cheap enough. They, so. they asked too much for that bundle. It's like seventy bucks. It is kind of a lot. Fucking bundle. Fucking yeah. Now, now we're trapped paying like twenty each for like two through six. <laughs> well, so I got I got them all on like a I'd sale be... for like thirty. Yeah, so did I. I got them all. I don't, I don't care about I don't care about doing them in, doing them in order and where I've already played through most of them on PSP. I would be interested in doing six. Be, six would be fucking six. badass. Yeah. Daniel. Was... Yeah, Daniel. Um, yeah, Final Fantasy One is a uh, is a classic for a reason. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it's an older game, but 
Um, I think it's it, it stood the test of time better than one might assume, and I think it's historically important in the in the world of RPGs. I wouldn't go as far as to say like if you're an RPG fan, you have to absolutely play it. But if you are someone that cares about the history of the genre, then it is like kind of like essential reading in a way. And uh, and if you go back to it, yeah, like there's plenty of ways to go to it. You know, if for whatever reason you don't want to play the pixel remaster, you can play it on your PSP, your GBA, your PS1, you know, whatever you got. There's, there's no shortage. Probably, yeah, on your phone. There's no shortage of no, ways think, to experience I think it. That with the Pixel Remaster, so you can't do the phone version anymore. <laughs> but like, no, it's it's a classic. It's it's a great game, and I think, yeah, like I said, it's it's historically significant, and it should be respected for that. Nice. Yeah, it's fun to play something that's uh, that's simple every once in a while, like a th- I, I guess almost a throwback. I mean it. It literally is the back. It is a, <laughs> yeah. a throwback. What a throwback. What a Classic cool, like, retro-inspired yeah. RPG. Yeah, wow. What a cool indie game we played today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, it's, not so ba- awesome. it's not better than FF7, though. I, I don't... Not, no way. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's uh, more approachable than FF7 is now. Uh, Sure. I don't. I, I don't. I don't, I don't have installed their mm, goggles for, know, for, for PS One I, games. So. Uh, I don't know. Actually, no. Now, I, now I'm thinking about it. Is it like there, I don't think there's. Any I love sections. FF Seven. So I don't think there's any sections though in FF Seven where like you have to bring up a guide in order to figure out what to do. Like there's you you. I don't think there's any. It, it, I don't think you can get lost in as easily in Seven compared to the first one. That's not an automatic write off for me. Well, we're talking about accessibility specifically. Oh, I see. So I'm not. I'm I not necessarily. Do you have Google? In 1990, would it have been less accessible? Yeah. So, I mean, could I just look up or text Spencer? Yo, like, where's the freaking dark elf? Like, yeah, like I could do that. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't ruin approachability for me. Dragon Quest One is maybe or two especially is like spe- like really not approachable i think dragon quest was more approachable than two i agree but, um i agree i haven't even you know, played this, much this of two not, and i agree this game is not cryptic mm, for the most part it's not right. only in like small pockets but for like the most desert part, part yeah <laughs> yeah and in that point at that case if you're still really struggling sure pull up the guide i don't think that's a problem do you want sure sure do or you just my, yeah do you want my hot take daniel Oh, oh I, this is this is a it's just the hot take table. Yeah, We're on fire today. Oh, what's boy. up, man? Fireman. I actually like Final Fantasy two a lot, and I think it's better than this Ooh. game. And I, okay. I don't think it's bad at all. I don't. I, I was conf- okay. If- I know everyone. Well, when I see the internet, they all say that two is like the worst one of the series. I mean, I don't. I, I don't particularly care for two but i'm not gonna like jump down your throat over it like it's i thought you're gonna i thought you're gonna jump down my throat <laughs> no. no dude i was the same way i like two when i <laughs> now have to come back i like throat to go at yours <laughs> <laughs> i liked two when i played it on psp and i remember i was i was working this job and i told him what about co work because i was like yeah i'm playing final fantasy 2 he was like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> disgusted with me. <laughs> uh, like I like I had my PSP I, and like I had an actual copy of that one, so I had like the little UMD of Final Fantasy two, and I showed him. He was like, "Ugh." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, are you gonna? So you're gonna bring in your pink slip now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think it's great, and it has like they're like the the, the leveling up system is bizarre, and it's like the stat system, obviously, and it. I'm. I played it. I had a great time with it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I never beat two. Uh, I just. I remember playing like a chunk of it and getting really annoyed with it and just like, uh, like I'm done. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I have the pixel remaster of it now, which I'm sure is probably like the best version of it. So, it, it, this is probably the best chance it's got for you know for me to actually like go through it. 
I don't know. Maybe. So join us next time where we're going to map out Final Fantasy X-2. Yes. Hope you like yes. pop idols. Oh, man. Can't <laughs> wait. The hot pants. Yes. Well, Daniel, and thanks that... so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. It was fantastic. Fantasy-like. Of Final Fantasy-like. Let's, yeah, let's, see, let's hope this isn't the final one you're on, right? I, 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 I see myself in this podcast again in the future. I think it's going to happen. Daniel's in my Final Fantasy. I am the Final Fantasy. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I take. <laughs> take, yeah. take Daniel right there. That's right, guys. Get fucking Sakaguchi out of here. It's all about the Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> no, fantasy, more like Final Dan to see. Oh. oh. Nice. Very nice. I can't top that. No, I'm not even going to try. Alex, I know you said you can't top that, but I would like you to try to. So can you please try to top that? Uh, yeah, you're setting him up to fail. Yes, I am. Here I go. 100%. I guess I guess we could say we finally met our fantasy with having Daniel Santasy on the show. Oh! <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Respectable. No. You try. <laughs> hey. hey. A for F. I was I was backed into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a fight. I like it. That's why I made you a fighter. <laughs> Jack. All right. Well, thank you so much. Usually we have a cool ending. I don't think we have one for this one. No, no, we we still have a cool ending. All you right, guys ready to go on a cool ending? Okay. Mini 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 cool ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Da 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 da. <laughs> oh shit! I think it's the wrong game. Pa 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 pa. Hey y'all! Don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.